Hey everyone, so today I have Michaela with me and I'm going to do an update on her um, just because this year has been pretty difficult with her. Um, the past two years there hasn't been really much going on, um, just basically her growing. So I'm just going to, I guess, start off by the beginning of the year and in January, um, the end of January, she was admitted to sick kids with pneumonia. Um, we were there for about 10 days. She was on antibiotics. While we were there, she ended up getting a collapsed lung. Um, so yeah, we were there about 10 days. And then again in April, we went to sick kids with an upper respiratory tract infection. And we were there for about seven days. Um, she was put on antibiotics originally, but then when they looked at her x-rays, um, noticed that it wasn't pneumonia, they took her off of it. Um, she did need 40% oxygen, and then also in January she needed 70% oxygen. So that was quite high. Um, they were asking us, you know, if she needed to be on life support, would we do that, would we not? Um, so it was a pretty difficult start off to the year, but we're through it and, you know, she's better now. So, um, yeah, it's just part of being Michaela that she's going to be in the hospital in and out, you know, so we'll get through it. And then on May 18th, Damien actually pulled out her G-tube, which is her feeding tube, and we had an appointment at SickKids um, in two days anyways, so we put in a Foley catheter and waited until we went to SickKids that day to get a new G-tube put in. Um, that day we were there for, I think, 12 hours. We had three appointments and it was a really, really long day for Michaela. Um, she's not used to being in her wheelchair that long, so it was a pretty harsh day, but we got through that as well. So this year we've been going to Michaela's therapy a lot, um, and it's not necessarily like physical therapy or occupational therapy. It's going and meeting with her whole team, which involves um, physiotherapy, OT, which is occupational therapy, um, her speech pathologist, her social worker, her caseworker, everyone you can think of that's involved with therapy. Um, we've been going to see, and that's for a number of reasons. Mainly, um, she is grown out of her wheelchair and she has to upgrade to a new one or either fix the seating on her old one. Uh, we're hoping to get a new one because this one isn't going to last much longer if we can't get a new one right away because of the funding. Um, the government will only fund if you grow out of a chair. So we, we are still waiting to see if we're going to get a new chair or just change the seating on this one. But if we only change the seating on this one, then it's going to probably it'll only be a few months um, if we get new seating instead of a new chair. But we're hoping for that new chair. We've also been looking at lift systems for her bathroom, for the bathroom and for her bedroom so that we are no longer lifting her by ourselves because she is 55 pounds and roughly 50 inches long. So she is very heavy to lift. And because she doesn't have any muscle tone, she cannot help us when we lift her. So she is dead weight. So we're looking into lift systems. We're waiting to get a quote from the company so that we can go ahead and try and get funding for that. Also, Michaela is going to require braces for her wrists. So as you can see, her wrists stay bent like this. Um, they are not too horrible right now and that's why we want to get going on the braces so that they don't get any worse um, because that can cause rubbing against her wrist and breakage of the skin. Um, so we're going to be, we have an appointment in July for that um, and I guess she'll be getting braces for that. Um, so we'll see how that goes and then also we've been seeing her therapy team um, in regards to her sensitivity because she is very sensitive to touch. 
So as you can see right now, she is calm and that is because I have been sitting with her for a little while, um, rubbing her and things like that. But if you touch her feet, she will completely freak out and normally her hands too as well. Um, they're very, very sensitive. Another thing we have been going through for Michaela is schooling. Now, she is almost six, year old, six years old. She will be six in the fall. So she is technically supposed to legally be in school by six. Um, however, because of her condition, she is allowed to be exempt from school. However, we can do what's called home instruction. Um, it's basically kind of like homeschooling. Homeschooling is where the parent will teach the child. Home instruction is where they will have either a teacher or an EA come in and teach the child in the home. So because Michaela is severely disabled, all she needs is a letter from her doctor stating that she needs home instruction and we can be approved for either five hours with a teacher per week or 10 hours with an EA per week. So we are planning on hopefully getting an EA to come in here. Um, that will basically um, help her with therapy, ranges of motion, which is moving her joints and limbs. Um, also her desensitizing, um, rubbing her and doing a therapy program with that. There are actually therapy programs for desensitizing. Um, and then also switching. So there are these switches where Michaela can push with her head and it'll play some music. And it's more of cause and effect um, to teach her, okay, well, if I move my head this way, it'll play this song. Or if I move this, my head this way, it'll stop playing. Um, so there's different types of therapy that she's hopefully gonna get starting in the fall. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, she will not be going into a school and that is because of her condition. Um, her immune system is not built for being in a school environment. She would end up being sick all the time. Um, they would have to bring in a nurse every single day that she was there um, to help with her feeds and medication and things like that. So going to school is really not in her future. Um, I don't plan on ever sending her to school. I have a very hard time um, even thinking about Michaela being in someone else's care because I know she is so difficult to manage. Um, so that's our goals for now is to do home instruction. Also, we have been referred to a saliva clinic, the best in the province. Um, we're supposed to hopefully go there soon just to talk about our options regarding her saliva. Um, she is very raspy. I don't know if you can hear her um, through the camera, but she sounds very wet um, and she's always coughing um, to clear that saliva. So we're just going to go talk about options. There is medication and I believe therapy and all different sorts of things that they can try. So we're going to go see them um, and they can recommend what they think is best for Michaela. Also, the day that we got the G2 put in, we did have a dentistry appointment. Now, Michaela hasn't been to dentistry in about two years, and that is because every time that she went for dentistry, she got pneumonia. She was in the hospital the next day with pneumonia. Um, so we had stopped it completely. However, because she is getting bigger, um, her teeth um, are very yellow and they collect like basically plaque and I wanted to see what options we had for that whether they would put her to sleep while they were cleaning her teeth or what so when we went we decided that we were only going to clean a couple teeth here and there say every couple months um, just to make sure that we're keeping up with it they called the yellow stuff on her teeth calcia so basically I'm guessing calcium um, also Michaela will never ever have any cavities and that is because she doesn't eat by mouth. So we are um, thankful for that because we won't ever have to deal with that. But because she is now almost six, she is starting to lose her teeth. So when we were there, all her bottom teeth, um, the four bottom teeth and then the top two teeth were very loose. 
and then six days after we were there on May 26th, she lost her first tooth, and it was this bottom middle one. Um, so that was pretty scary for me. Um, she can end up swallowing a tooth without me knowing it. Um, and also because my baby girl is getting so big, um, every parent obviously has to go through that, watching your child grow. Um, but with her it's a little different because she's still a baby to me because she has the mentality of a baby basically. Um, so watching her lose a tooth was pretty sad, but also um, it was pretty interesting. So. And then one more update for Michaela is that the past week or so, um, Michaela's G-tube has been infected. And in the past, it got infected, and when she first got it, it's very hard to keep the site very clean and control infections. However, Michaela went like three years without getting infections, and the only reason why she got one now is because her tube was pulled out just a little too far, um, so it caused irritation and an infection. So what I do is I just clean it with um, hydrogen peroxide with Q-tips and things like that. And then also my doctor, my doctor prescribed an eardrop actually for it um, to help keep the site clean and she's never ever had a huge problem with her G-tube. So we're very thankful for that. But I think that is all for Michaela's update at five and a half years old. As you can see, she is looking at you guys while she was. Um, so yeah, that's my update on Michaela. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, I'd be willing to answer them in the comments below. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. We'll see you in our next video. Bye guys.